All right, good evening, everybody. Um, I have seven o'clock, so we'll go ahead and get started. I'll call to order this meeting of the North Middlesex Regional School District School Committee for Monday, May 15th, 2023. Um, just a reminder to the committee and the audience that this meeting is being recorded. Um, do the roll call if you're here, please let me know. David? Here. Here. Uh, Jessica, I believe, uh, cannot make it. Uh, June? Here. Uh, Lisa Bloom? Yes. Lisa Martin? Good. Uh, here. Sorry. <laughs> what? Randy? <clears throat> here. Uh, Susan? I don't see. Uh, Tom? Here. And I'm here, so that is a quorum. Thank you, everybody. Our next scheduled meeting of the North Middlesex Regional School Committee will be held on uh, Monday, June 12th at 7 p.m. First uh, order of business is our consent agenda. We have the approval of minutes. We have accounts payable warrants, payroll warrants, and a series of donations. Um, Craig, I'll take yep. this, and I apologize that I blew through this really quickly uh, earlier uh, before the weekend and looking at it. Not all the stuff for the consent agenda is in here. There's only one uh, check for the donation and there's nothing for the warrants. Uh, um, That's fine for the donations. I figured that much, but the warrant uh, folder is empty. Yeah, I don't know why I didn't get any any warrant information, so I couldn't pull it over. So okay. I would request that we pull that from the consent agenda. Absolutely. Um, accounts payable and payroll will pull from the consent agenda. Yes. Um, thank you. <clears throat> so this will be approval of minutes from April 21 May and May 1st and uh, the donations. Um, and I'll, I'll just read through them. So $2,725 from the uh, SMS PTO to help fund field trip busing, $23.39 from Ohio Pile Prints Incorporated as part of the clothing sales program, $2,000 from the Varnum Brook PTO to fund the grade three Sturbridge Village field trip, $3.70 for box tops uh, education to uh, SCCC and $49.80 for box tops of VB. So moved. Second. All right, June Randy, thank you. All right, this is approval of the consent agenda. David? Yes. June? Yes. Lisa B? Yes. Lisa M. Yes. Randy. Yes. Tom. Yes. And I will vote yes. So that is unanimous. Thank you. Uh, we did not have any public communications uh, submitted this evening, so we'll move on to our reports. Um, first, uh, chairperson's report. I just have, uh, just a couple of things, um, and really. Um, more for the, the viewing public, I guess, in terms of uh, the school committee and, and how we um, do business. It's probably just a good time to refresh people as we start a new uh, new committee cycle here. So um, <clears throat> there's always uh, a lot of thoughts and opinions out there on social media, especially, but I do wanna start by kind of outlining what these meetings are um, and, and how to get in touch with us. I think those are probably two important things. So these are business meetings. Um, the public is invited to, to view these business meetings, just like um, the business meetings of, of any other elected body. Um, we discuss matters that are in our purview, um, which is mainly uh, budget and policy, um, and then uh, receive updates from the administration on items of, of broad interest to the committee or, or the, the school uh, district at large. Uh, most of our work does occur in subcommittees, um, so you may see items come through this meeting and um, they may be big items that have little discussion here. And that's usually because all the discussion has happened in, in our subcommittee meetings, finance, policy, um, communications, et cetera. So um, that may be wise things may come to this body and uh, appear to, to go through in agreement. And that's because we've already had those uh, discussions and deliberations. Um, from a feedback perspective, again, public comment, um, we ask people to sign up in advance of these meetings and uh, give give folks uh, up to three minutes to to, to speak their mind uh, at these meetings. But honestly, the best way is to send an email, and you can do that to NM School Committee, all one word, all together, 
at nmrsd.org. That comes to all the committee members. And uh, again, that allows us to engage in some, some back and forth, get more information, uh, refer people to the right uh, person um, in the administrative team and work to get answers. A lot of times <clears throat> things that come through public comment here, we just can't discuss because it's not on the agenda. And that's uh, that's more an open meeting law item than anything else. So um, highly encourage people to send emails. Um, I know there's the, there's the desire for folks, especially for issues they're passionate about to come here and, 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 and speak, which again, we appreciate. Um, not always able to respond. So I, I wanna clear that up and make sure folks are, are clear with that. But um, again, ask people to, to send us emails, policies, as you'll see later tonight, all those all policies that come through us go out on the website for uh, at least two weeks for people to review and provide feedback. We, I don't know, Randy rarely get feedback from, from the general public, if ever. Um, I know a lot of, there's, there's feedback out there that uh, um, people wanna have input on policies and, and absolutely that's, that's why we put it out there for, for two weeks. So highly encourage folks to go to the website and uh, as, as we call it, policies will come through for a first reading. And that is the start of kind of the two week period for those policies to be out there for review. Um, and then it will come back to the committee for uh, discussion of any changes that may have come through and then approval um, or could refer back for additional changes as well. Um, so just wanted to put that out there again, NM uh, school committee at nmrsd.org if folks uh, have any input. Randy, do you have a comment or question? I just wanted to clarify when you were uh, saying that a lot of the um work it's done in subcommittees. I want the public just to understand that it's not the whole committee meeting in those subcommittees and we're not making binding decisions. Um, the subcommittees are no more than four members, so it is less than a quorum. We can't we do not have any authority, but that is where uh, a smaller group will go through a lot of the details to bring um, a better picture to the full school committee where all of our votes at this big meeting is where the decisions are being made. It's just recommendations being put forth. Yeah, that's an excellent clarification, Randy. Thank you. Um, yeah, that, that is that's where recommendations will come forward from uh, from those groups. Any questions from the committee or, or comments before I move on? All right. Uh, if there's any um, topics that again the public or uh, school committee members feel. Um, deserve a couple minutes to just make sure we've got the right information out there. Just let me know and we'll we'll cover it in a future meeting. All right, uh, superintendent's report, Superintendent Morgan. Thanks, uh, Craig, I'll be quick. I just wanted to let the school committee know that as my update mentioned uh, over this past weekend, uh, last week, NM celebrated Staff Appreciation Week. And just want to reiterate again to the entire committee and to the public how lucky we are to have the staff that we do um, from, from our teachers, counselors, admin, custodians, food service, paraprofessionals, nurses, secretaries. Um, and hopefully I haven't missed anyone. I just really do a, a fantastic job. We wouldn't be where we are without them. So thank you. And that's all I have. Just wanted to put that out there to the committee. Excellent. Thank you, sir. Uh, moving on to new business, uh, first up, we have the FY24 preschool rates. Um, thank you, Mr. Brooks. Yeah, uh, all set, Craig? Yep. Okay, so um, the district has not raised uh, preschool rates since uh, uh, FY21, uh, just prior to COVID. So um, I did a, a dipstick measure with others, other districts in the area, um, Ayer, Shirley, Harvard, uh, Tewksbury, Bill Ricca, Drake, it, and, and um, our rates were all a little bit lower than theirs. So I'm proposing a minimal increase. It's a 78% increase. Um, we, we, we currently have about 80 students on a waiting list. So um, we've not heard from parents that um, the cost from preschool, you know, has been a hardship and we have a very lengthy waiting list. So I'm proposing a, a minimal uh, a minimal raise in the tuition rates to be commensurate with other districts. And this is the first time we've done it in four years. Thank you.
All right. Sorry, I could not find my unmute button when I share the screen. <laughs> Dave, you have a question? Um, yeah, uh, Mr. Brooks, can you just repeat the percent that you were saying? It's between six and seven percent. I mean, I'm sorry, it's between seven and eight percent. Fantastic. That's what I thought, but I thought I had also heard 78 percent, which was a little bit different. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Tom? Um, yeah, so my question, just looking at, um, you know, what you're projecting here. So I know we, it says that there's an extensive wait list for tuition. I know when we talked about, um, you know, some of the stuff with, with the budget in recent meetings, um, some of the considerations that I, I, I might be misremembering this was that when we were looking at different things that there was a decreased enrollment at the preschool. Am I misremembering that? Uh, so our worry when we moved the preschool from Varnabrook over to Squanacook was that um, we would lose enrollment because of the Pepperell parents. And actually, um, our waiting list is longer than it was when we were over at over in, in Pepperell. So um, we've not seen a decrease and, and we have um, multiple parents, you know, a month uh, reach out and ask, ask what the status of our waiting list is. And as soon as, you know, as soon as the slot comes available, we, we open it up to them. Okay, that's great. I just, I was just concerned because I know, again, like talking about, about budget, we had, mm -hmm. I, I think, looked at that. And I think some of the decisions that we recently made may impact that, or am I mm -hmm. mistaken? You mean as far as if, if we run the program? Staffing. With one, was that, so the, the, the 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 tuition money that comes in doesn't offset the cost for a teacher and a paraprofessional. Mm -hmm. um, so so because we looked into that um, a handful of years ago of opening up another class and just having more tuition paying students in. But because we're because our program is um, approved by by DESE, um, we need to have an integrated program. So we need to have half of those children with, you know, on IEPs and half of the kids being typical. So we looked into that, whether or not we could open up another classroom or two and, and have some more tuition students. But because of our um, approval status with DESE, we're not allowed to do that. Okay, thank you for that. Thanks, Tom. Uh, Randy? Randy, you're muted. My hand was up by accident, so sorry. Okay, no worries, uh, <laughs> Superintendent. Yes, I, I just wanted to um, maybe have Mr. Brooks explain. I think one of the reasons why we were looking at um, decreasing some staff in the preschool program was because of the number of kids that were aging out mm -hmm. this year that were moving into kindergarten, just to address Mr. Casey's question. Sure. So, so historically, you know, um, we, we start the year with lower enrollment numbers and then as students age in or turn three, um, you know, they, they, the, the preschool grows. And so it's the largest it will ever be at the end of June when school is out. But then, then by, by default, we move up 35, 32, 38 kids, kids up into the kindergarten program. So it brings the numbers back down again. And so it's kind of that wave that we ride every single year. This year, we we were inundated with uh, requests to, to uh, evaluate two and a half and two and three quarter year old students um, starting last July. And so those classrooms filled much quicker than they typically do, which was the reason why we had to add a an additional classroom teacher and an additional paraprofessional in November of this year. And I, I, I attribute a lot of that to those are the kids who really didn't receive any in-person early intervention services during COVID. Um, many parents didn't know what services were available to those children. And so we saw a massive influx of little guys that were eligible for special education. Um, but that wave is kind of going to move the other way once we move all these kindergarten kids up into the elementary schools. Thank you both for that. Um, I just have a question around um, <clears throat> because as these as these rates go up, is there any um, consideration for families where this might be a hardship or they're not able to afford the increase? So occasionally, um, well, so 
if a, if a family reaches out to us and asks whether or not we take um, you know vouchers for state assistance, we don't because that's a completely separate approval process. But we have um, we we refer them to the uh, the Seven Hills Child Care uh, Resource Referral Network, and so every parent that's reached out to us that's asked about that, we've 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 uh, referred them out, and they've received um, they they've received some sort of child care assistance with some of the local preschools. Okay, good, thank you. Any other questions from the committee? All right, then I will take a motion that the school committee approve the FY24 preschool rates as presented. So moved. Second. All right, Lisa M and Randy. Any other questions or comments? All right, seeing none, uh, David. Yes, yeah, sorry about that. No worries. Thank you. Uh, June? Yes. Uh, Lisa B? Yes. Lisa M? Yes. Randy? Yes. Tom? Yes. And I will vote yes. So that's unanimous. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, we have the Valley Collaborative Board of Directors. Um, so we are a member of, of, and correct me, Superintendent, two collaboratives, at least the Valley Collaborative yes. coming up, the Keystone Educational Collaborative. Um, and as members, uh, as district members of those collaboratives, we uh, appoint um, one member on their board of directors. And I don't know if it's uh, traditionally or, or always, we've appointed the superintendent to those to those roles. Um, so the first, um, I'll take a motion and then we can discuss if we need to, but uh, take a motion that the committee vote to appoint uh, Superintendent Brad Morgan to the Valley Collaborative Board of Directors for the term July 1, 2023 to June 30, 2024. So move. I'll second. All right, Randy and Lisa. All right, any questions, comments, or uh, Superintendent, anything you want to add? Um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with it. I, in years past, it's, it has been a challenge being on both because they tend to have the same meeting date, one at um, 8.30 and the other at 10 on the third Thursday of the month, but they have tried to work with me on that so that there aren't conflicts because um, one of them's remote, the other one's in person, and they, they do tend to overlap. But again, um, both the executive directors tend to work together to avoid those conflicts, and it's worked out pretty well the past couple of years. Randy? Um, would you want to have a designee for one of them? Um, somebody else like maybe uh, Brad Brooks or uh, Gary uh, Reese as far as uh, representing the district uh, so that you don't have that conflict between the two of them? So I, I I believe that the Keystone is the only one that allows for a designee, and that would be a school committee member. Um, the Valley does not, um, Valley Collaborative does not have, to my knowledge, the option for a designee. Um, so again, it's more or less, more or less Keystone and you know, it would certainly be appreciated, but as long as they continue to work together and, and avoid the conflicts, um, that's really that that's really what the key is for me so that I'm not um, missing meetings because you can't miss more than two meetings a year. Okay. So you have, generally have one a month and, and you cannot be absent for more than two. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Rooks. I was just, I was just going to reiterate what Brad said that that in my role as director of special education I'm not allowed to be on on their board because it's a voting board and I'm on their I'm on their director board so we looked into that a few years ago to try to alleviate some of the meetings for Brad but I in my role I cannot be on that board. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Any other <clears throat> excuse me any other questions or comments from folks. All right, seeing none, this will be to appoint the superintendent to the Valley Collaborative. David? Yes. June? Yes. Lisa B? Sorry, yes. No worries. Lisa M? Yes. Randy? Yes. Tom? Yes. 
And I will vote yes. So that is unanimous. Um, <clears throat> similar, similarly, uh, we have the Keystone Educational Collaborative. Um, and I'll take a motion to appoint uh, Superintendent Brad Morgan to the Keystone Educational Collaborative Board of Directors for the term July 1, 2023 to June 30, 2024. So moved. Second. Second. I do June and uh, Lisa M on that one. Any questions on this? All right. Seeing none. Um, David? Yes. June? Yes. Lisa B? Yes. Lisa M? Yes. Randy? Yes. Tom? Yes. And I'll vote yes, so that's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, moving on, we have the History National Honor Society. Uh, Principal McMahon, I believe is on, yes. And there he is. Sorry, Greg, how are you? No worries, good, how are you? Good. Uh, so yeah, thanks for letting us come in tonight. I, I believe Miss Becky Jackson is on as well. Somewhere I just can't see on my screen, but uh, Miss Jackson is a history, history department chair at the high school. Came to me a few months ago with this idea of looking into National Honor Society for history students at the high school. Um, I'll let her explain in a second. There's only about a dozen or so schools in the state that are doing this. Uh, I think it's a very cool opportunity to really celebrate our students that are passionate about history um, and are looking into that as a a career path. Having been a history teacher myself, I, I have a, a little bias to this uh, this new branch of NHS, but I think it falls in line nicely with what we've done with regard to National Art Honor Society, uh, as well as Tri-M. So I'll, I'll let Ms. Jackson kind of explain where it came from and all we're looking for. So Becky, if you're on, go for it. Hi, thank you. Um, as uh, Tim just said, uh, we've been thinking about bringing this National Social Studies Honor Society to the high school for a while. Uh, we definitely have a lot of kids that are interested in the social studies. Um, and with the passing of the legislation regarding the civic action projects, uh, just in the past few years, the interest has really gone up amongst our student body. Um, as of right now, the most updated list of Massachusetts schools that offer this is only at 18. Um, and there are not many in our area. So this would be a really nice thing to bring to North Middlesex students who are interested in the social studies um, and make us stand out a little bit. Um, we're looking at allowing juniors and seniors to apply. Um, and the Honor Society is really centered around students, fostering students' um, civic action, um, as well as their interest in the social studies. So the juniors who are just now starting their um, civic action projects, um, it would allow them as seniors to use, to to continue those projects and really implement them either in the school community or their local community um, as their hours for the Honor Society. And the one thing we found over the past two to three years of starting to implement this project is that change takes a lot of time, even at a small, uh, small level. So if students are able to continue their civic action projects with school administration, as well as uh, the social studies department, um, I think we could really foster some more excitement amongst our kids. And um, that's not the only thing the Social Studies uh, Honor Society would do, but it's one of the, the real world kind of practical um, kind of outputs. And that's where we're at. We've kind of surveyed our kids. The sophomore class in particular is very excited about it, um, as are the juniors, but um, that's kind of a quick overview. So thanks. So thank you, Becky. Uh, so we're bringing this to committee tonight um, for two purposes. One, to get approval to get things going for the 23-24 uh, academic year. And then uh, at the appropriate time, also uh, as an advisor, uh, ensure that Ms. Jackson is afforded an opportunity to get a stipend that's commensurate with other Honor Society advisors of the high school. Um, that's really it for this evening. All right. Thank you both. Uh, any questions from the committee? Uh, Tom? 
Yeah, just one. Um, I, I too definitely have a, a social studies bias, so I, I can appreciate that. Um, just thinking through as a committee member, though, um, just thinking through stipend, I know there are, you know, world language honor societies, science honor societies, you know, just thinking, you know, from a financial standpoint down the line, if, if those are to be pursued as well, and, and just the implications there, I don't know if you've thought through that at all. No, Tom, fair question. Um, no, to be honest, no. I, I mean, if this is if this is a start of something that other academic areas, core or elective, want to start looking into, then I think we want to certainly encourage that. Um, you know, with that, I think we want to make sure that any advisor or staff member who steps up is just probably compensated. You know, if that means a regulation of how we look in our societies, that could be something we look at too. Um, I think that'd be worth it to, if, if we're going to go that route and expand to to see what this type of look like for the advisors, I think is more than reasonable. And, and again, if that, uh, if it creates an opportunity for other students in other academic areas, and yeah, I think we need to take steps. But I think to your point though, uh, make sure we, we don't rain it out too far and we can't bring it back in financially. So I see both sides of that. Yeah, no, I, again, I, I love the idea. Fully supportive, obviously, um, probably biased supportive as well as you. Um, again, just, just thinking through that. So I, I appreciate all the work to do that. No, I appreciate it. It's a good point. So something to consider for other, other content areas. Thank you, Tom. Uh, June? Um, I just wanted to say that I really do like this idea a lot. I think it's going to be very beneficial for the students that participate. Um, in fact, possibly opening up scholarship opportunity and, you know, it looks great on, uh, you know, resumes, colleges, stuff like that. So I think that's great, but it's twofold. It's not just for the students. It could be beneficial to the community as well. And I'm always in support of ways to bring our students and community together more. So I think this is a really good idea. Excellent. Thank you, June. Uh, Randy. Yeah, I, I want to, you know, Kind of go over what it, they, everyone else is saying. I, I think this is wonderful. I, I really love the idea of having the honor societies um, at the high school and giving the, the children the opportunity uh, to uh, join in, to be productive, uh, to have something more for their resumes um, and all of that. Uh, from the school committee side, uh, Craig, I'd like to maybe going forward um, really any new uh, stipend positions, I, I think we need to have the broader discussion first um, as far as what we have in place, how much we're paying, um, and have the discussion from the financial end of things on how we're going to have this process go forward instead of just these one-offs, because all of these uh, positions always sound so wonderful. Um, and I just want to make sure that it fits into our structure financially and um, in, in, in every other way so that we can you know, kind of come up with a more structured um, format to uh, receive and evaluate uh, these positions that would be good. Randy, I, I, I agree. I think, uh, any, I mean, anything financial probably should go through finance as well, just for a recommendation, even if it's just a quick, quick discussion. Randy, to that point, I appreciate that because I've spoke to my building reps of, you know, the past couple of years about consistency with stipends, uh, ensuring that those that are, you know, two, three, four years into their advisory are getting some sort of compensation. So I, I actually appreciate where you're going with that because it would be great just to take a big look at what we're doing with that and how we're, how we're filling those spots appropriately. So I'd be on board for helping with that process because I think it would, it would also give staff a clear picture of what they're in for. And, um, but, all, you know, but it also validates the work. So I think what you said is totally dead on. I like where that's going. So thank you for that. Thank you. Um, Lisa. I love the idea and we can pull it into finance and review the stipends and look at all of that structure and, and come back to the committee with a better understanding. Does that work for you, Tim? All yeah, right, he absolutely. should have said yes. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, you know, uh, getting the program started is, is the primary thing. You know, um, we want to get this started next fall. And uh, I'm not going to put Ms. Jackson on the spot, but uh, the stipend does not make or break this movement. Uh, we still want to have the, 
National Association, on a society, regardless of compensation for the next couple of academic years, if need be, I think there's enough value. The, to what June said, the community piece far outweighs uh, the compensation. I think what we could get out of it from a community standpoint would be awesome. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I get where the committee's coming from. I just please know that our primary goal is to get it approved and the stipend could be a secondary piece of the puzzle. All right, if there's um, no other questions, if someone wants to uh, make a motion to approve the position, <clears throat> and then we'll uh, we'll refer to the stipend piece to finance. So moved. Second. And June, thank you. Any other questions or comments? All right, so this is to um, <clears throat> approve the History National Honor Society position uh, as it was presented. And um, again, we will refer the stipend piece to the Finance Subcommittee. So David? Yes. June? Yes. Lisa B? Yes. Lisa M? Yes. Randy? Yes. Tom? Yes. And I'll vote yes. So that is unanimous. Thank you, uh, Becky and Tim. Appreciate it. Thanks for your time, everybody. Have a good night. You too. Uh, next up, we had a um, <clears throat> request, uh, and I'm just looking for the name on the list, um, from Ms. Janoder, I believe is how you pronounce it, to speak about school librarians. And there she is. Oops. All right, Meg, I think you're in and you should be able to, there we go. Hi hey folks, can you hear me? We can, good evening. Okay, great. Thank you so much for having me. Um, am I allowed to present here? I'm looking at my screen, share screen, yep, I can, okay, great. Um, I have a slideshow that I'd like to present as well. Um, first of all, I really want to thank all of the school committee uh, members here today. I know that you are all volunteers. And I really want to thank you for the important work that the school committee does. So thank you very much. Um, is my screen being shared yet? Rob, is there a... Um, can I share my screen? It says it's disabled from my end. Should be all set now. Thank you. Sorry, folks. Okay. Uh, is this one sharing? Is it sharing, folks, or not at all? No. Okay. I'm just going to move ahead. All right. Um, So I am, um, I asked to come and speak to you today because um, I wanted to set, shed some light on the unintended consequences of the recent decision not to have library teachers in the elementary and middle schools. Um, before I begin, I am Meg Genoder or Margaret Genoder. I have lived in Townsend since 1999. I have raised two children here in town who have come through North Middlesex District. One graduated in, in 2020 and one in 2022. Um, I am also a librarian at the Townsend Public Library. And since 2020, April of 2020, I have been the Hawthorne Brook Librarian. And I'm here tonight because two and a half weeks ago, I found out that librarians at the elementary school and middle school were being eliminated. And I was shocked. Um, and then I found out that some paras were being hired to replace the librarians. And um, I know that you had to make tough decisions and that you thought that um, here's a budget line item that we are not required to fund. So let's get some cost savings to the budget. Um, but there have been a number of costs that are going to be incurred due to this decision um, that I don't think the district was aware of. 
And those include that by being eliminated from the, by eliminating your school librarian, the school is no longer um, eligible for Ma the Massachusetts Library Association. And that means that all of the databases, so Britannica and Gale database, and the online reading um, app Sora, which is also being provided um, at a minimal subscription rate to the district um, through the Massachusetts Library Associ Association, those benefits go away. As of June 30th, you don't have databases, you don't have Encyclopedia Britannica at the elementary and middle schools. Another thing that I do for the schools is um, I use interlibrary loan to bring resources into the schools. So again, with the Massachusetts Library Association's um, membership, I am allowed to borrow library books for the classroom. I am allowed to borrow audiobooks so that teachers can play those um, when they're reading a story in class. I am allowed to borrow videos that the teachers can use in the classroom. Without the Massachusetts Library Association membership, those benefits go away. I can tell you that last year alone, I borrowed about 150 books for classroom use. So those would have to be purchased somehow from the district. Um, but the real reason why I came here tonight and the real thing that's concerning me and why I felt that I needed to talk to you folks is that um, I am concerned about the education that I am providing to the students at Hawthorne Brook Middle School. I am a librarian, but I am also a library media specialist. And I am the only media specialist in the Hawthorne Brook School. And what I teach the students is how to evaluate media that they find online, information to make sure that it's real. How do we look at websites? I teach digital literacy. How do we use, how do we um, legally make new information digitally? And how um, do we evaluate that information to dis determine if it's real or not? So whether or not you decide that you don't need school librarians in the district, our students really need this education. They're, um, they need to be informed about how to find real information in the digital world. They just can't be digital literate citizens without that knowledge. And by eliminating the library teachers, unfortunately, you um, that skill set is gone. The computer teachers that work in the schools right now teach um, coding. They teach to project lead the way. They're not teaching media literacy skills. They're not teaching how to find information and how to evaluate it. And that's why I really wanted to come here tonight was to let you know that I'm concerned about this lack in the education at the in the school. So I thank you for your time. And I hope that you will consider this because um, I am greatly concerned about it. Thank you, Meg. I appreciate you uh, taking the time to speak with us. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that anybody has um, if I can. Anybody from the committee questions or comments? Dave? Um, yes. Uh, do you have an approximate number of about how much money um, those books that you rented uh, saved the district last year? Um, I can definitely get you a figure. I would have to look up about what each one is worth. Um, I'm just uh, guess say each one of those books, you'd have to pay $12 a copy. Um, a lot of the stuff that I borrow is like audiobooks and videos. Those are a lot more expensive. Um, one of the things that I'm actually greatly concerned about is that at this point, um, the audiobooks that are available through Sora are actually written into the IEPs for the middle school. So I 
don't know how the district's going to handle that because that um, subscription goes away as of um, June 30th. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dave. Uh, June? Um, thank you, Meg, for bringing this to our attention because I, I feel like not this entire picture was discussed um, previously. Um, so I, I'm glad you brought that to the committee. Um, and I'm wondering, I, I, I don't think you would have the answers to the question I'm going to ask, but perhaps Brad or Gary, um, how, what is the plan to address some of these issues that, um, that clearly we will be having? It's something that we'll, we'll be addressing over the summer. So I, I don't have an answer for you right now, but it's something that we would address over the summer. Do you have anything else to do? Are you good? Sorry, I, I mean, I, if there's not an answer, then I guess I don't have any more questions right now. Okay. I can, can say that the membership um, expires on um, June 30th to the MLA. So that means that is when the databases and SORA and those sorts of things will no longer be available for our students. Thank you, Meg. Uh, Randy? I'm just wondering if there's um, similar issues with the elementary school as far as do they borrow books? And how much do they use these resources through the Mass Library Association? Um, or is it uh, more at the middle school level? I am i don't think that I'm a, the appropriate one to ask. Um, that does depend sort of on librarian versus librarian um, and how much we're asked. So um, I can't speak to that. I'm sorry. Okay, no, it was kind of just thrown out there. Um, you know, I do know that the high school library uses interlibrary loan and they would still retain those benefits because um, they still have a librarian. So. Brad, I don't know, or Gary, you know uh, um, whether these resources are used uh, to the same extent at the, at the elementary schools? We would have to look into it. At the, the Britannica database I know is used in research projects. So I suspect that that wouldn't be all that. I mean, the, the district's gonna have to pay for it out of pocket since they, they're not getting it for by funding a library teacher. So. Uh, Dave? Uh, do you know how much a uh, Britannica subscription is per, uh, well, is it per child? It is based on, I actually do know this because I looked it up. I can, I'm gonna, I'm referencing my email right now. Um, it's based on per student. It's gonna take me a minute to get there. Of course. I'm, I, memory is telling me it was a couple thousand dollars per school to, to, it may not be that much. I have no idea about the other services. That was the only one that I could readily look up. It is not coming to me quickly. Sorry, folks. I wouldn't wait for it. No worries. Yeah, we'll, we'll, okay. Did you have another question? Thank you. Uh, no, let me put my hand down. All right. Anyone else on the committee with questions? Is your hand back up, Dave? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. No uh, what is the approximate savings between um, cutting librarians and instituting um, paraprofessionals? I'd have to go back to the budget document and look. It was shared. It was shared a few weeks ago. Um, it depends on 
the, the, the number of years of experience a person has in the district, um, whether or not they're taking benefits and things of that nature. Um, but I don't have that figure in front of me. It was, I believe, presented at the last school committee meeting. Anything else, Dave? Um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, there seems to be a lot of unanswered questions, but this is an incredibly important and serious topic. Um, would we be able to compile a list of these questions, um, given the information provided tonight and have information uh, available at the next meeting? Who, uh, yeah, I don't, uh, who is that to, or just in general? Uh, sorry, that was to you. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I think there's, there's questions being asked that, I mean, we can find the answers to, absolutely. I, I, I they're they're unanswered because <clears throat> we don't have the information right at our fingertips. So I think between uh, the superintendent and, and some of the budget information that's been shared previously, I think we can get the committee answers to most of those questions. Um, I mean, I, I know this is a difficult conversation, so I mean, I appreciate having the conversation um, and I appreciate Meg having the courage to come here and 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 communicate kind of what her concerns are and the impacts it's going to have on the students. So I, I uh, again, really appreciate that. Um, Thank you. I also have a presentation that I will mail out or email out to you folks with um, more of my research and okay. stuff too. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be helpful. Um, and if I can help in any way, I will. I am literally concerned about the information literacy that I feel that the kids need. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I, and I think, um, <clears throat> again, I, where we're at and again we're not here to make a decision so i, I want to preface it by saying that but I, where we're at with the budget um there are there is no easy decision so i think getting as much information as we can um and making sure that we're making the hard decision with as much information as possible is going to be is going to be key um because there's no just the way the budget is i think any folks that were at town meeting at least in purple um heard just how difficult things are for families and seniors and, and everybody else in town. So um, cuts have to be made. It's just a matter of, of where we're going to take that from, unfortunately. Um, Tom, you have a question or comment? Sorry, um, I I guess if we're going to like compile questions, I, I it can wait or I can ask it now. It doesn't matter. Yeah, if it's up to you either way. I I want to I we got I want to not put people on the spot, um, especially if we don't anticipate having information. But I mean, if they're important questions, we can certainly talk about. It. Yeah, let me let me just. I, I'm happy to send it afterwards. That's fine. Okay. All right. Anything else from anybody? All right. Well, Meg, thank you again. Appreciate uh, you coming and, and uh, giving us some of the background. I really appreciate it. I appreciate um, the opportunity to speak. So thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Um, moving on to uh, subcommittee reports. Accelerator repair. I was going to bet that there wouldn't be an update. And I figured if I said that, there would be an update. So Lisa. There's no update. And oh, okay. we don't have an update for finance as well. Okay. Uh, Ashby Elementary, June? Uh, no big update, meeting tomorrow. Excellent. Uh, communications, Tom? Likewise, no update. All right. Um, negotiation and personnel, um, Lisa M and Dave? No update there either. All right. Um, policy, Randy? Uh, yes, we have one uh, policy, uh, uh, policy KF-E1, the school facilities rental and uh, personnel fee schedule. We've made an update to include a season camp contract. Um, so there's notes on what would um, qualify for season uh, camp 
and then what the rates would be. Uh, this was uh, thanks to uh, Jeremy Hammond um, and the superintendent working with the groups that we have in the district um, coming up with something that uh, covers our costs and is affordable for the uh, town groups. Uh, so you can take a look in here. This is just for a first reading, which means it'll go out. Uh, if anybody has any comments um, or questions, um, you'll have time to return those that we can discuss. Um, so I will move that we approve KF-E1 for a first reading. Second. All right, any questions, comments? All right, uh, David? Yes. June? Yes. Lisa B? Yes. Lisa M? Yes. Randy? Yes. Tom? Yes. And I will vote yes, and just as a reminder, the policy will be posted on the district website um, for public review and comment. And then we will typically vote to approve this uh, to put it into effect at our next meeting. Craig, I just wanted to let you know Susan is here. Oh. Catch me on the next vote. Yeah. Hi, Susan. Welcome. Hello. All right. Uh, anything else for policy, uh, Randy? That's all for tonight. All right. Thank you. Um, and then we have our liaisons to district town select boards, uh, June, Dave. Uh, do you have any update or anything you want to share from your respective towns? Nothing from Pepro. No contact yet. I have no update, but I do like that this was added to our um, agenda. So I will keep that in mind going forward. All right. Well, I cannot take credit for that. I'll have to give credit to Robin for that one. Yeah, I, I added. I thought it, it it would be important. So I'm Absolutely. glad you're happy with it. Yeah, thank you, Robin. Um. And then uh, we had one item that was added to the agenda uh, after it was uh, initially posted, and we have children and staff members attending NM schools, uh, Superintendent Morgan. Sure. So um, as the committee knows, uh, it was a recommendation from me not to have school choice, um, at least at this point in time for the 2023-2024 uh, school year. And just wanted to put out there, um, I had been um, reaching out to, to legal counsel just because we did receive some requests from in-state staff members, so staff members that live in-state that would like their children to attend NM schools. So I did reach out to Nick Dominello, our, our school attorney, and did ask what, uh, what if any leeway we had. And he did say that um, there actually is an avenue to accept um, children of staff members that live in state, um, but it is a school committee decision if it is not something that is negotiated into the teaching contract, which is not the case right now. So we do have a, a handful of teachers in the district that would like to send their kids to NM, um, provided there is room. I have had conversations or correspondence with um, most, if not all of them at this point, um, and have explained to them that, um, you know, basically th this is a decision that the school committee has to make um, for next year. And it is something that we would have to consider for negotiations moving forward with the next um, teacher contract. So I just wanted to put that out there um, to see what the committee's thoughts were, provided we have room um, and that we're not being put in a situation where we have to hire an additional uh, teacher or staff member in order to accommodate um, a child of one of our current staff members. Uh, it is something that, again, if possible, and if there's room, I would recommend because it does create, um, could create a hardship on a teacher that we could ultimately end up, um, you know, having look elsewhere so that they can get closer to um, closer to their own community where their kids go to school. So uh, again, something I would recommend, but ultimately it is something the committee has to decide unless it's in the collective bargaining agreement. So do you need a, uh, go ahead, Randy. I was just going to um, ask, I think I already know the answer, but I do believe uh, that we have done this 
intra district. So if we have teach, we have some teachers that, um, let's say, uh, live in Townsend, work in Pepperell, and we have a policy, and they've been able to take their children into uh, Pepperell so that they're in the same school that they are teaching. So that is something that we're already doing for the teachers. This yes. would simply be for the teachers that don't live within the district to still be able to bring their children with them to the school that they're teaching at or in the district. Yes. And we also have teachers that don't live in district that fall under school choice that have previously. But again, school choice is not something that um, th that I recommended this year. Okay. But we do have intra-district uh, staff members for sure. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, comments? Tom? Um, yeah, I just wanted to say, I, I, d I definitely agree. Like it's, it's a nice incentive. Um, the, I think the key piece to it is, is based on space. I, I keep looking at the numbers at Barnum Brook and it is chock full. So certainly don't, you know, want to, you know, create some incentives. And I think that's great. I also don't want to create a hardship for a classroom teacher where their class sizes are swelling to do this too so I, I just again the size piece is important if it's there I, I would certainly be in favor of it but I, the size piece just looking at those class size numbers and and the budget where we're at I it's likely to go up anyway so just very mindful of that you yeah. Um, can you may have said it? Sorry, but could you give an indication of how many teachers this would affect that are looking to to have their kids come to the district? I th I think for next year we're looking at about three or four. All right. Any other questions? And again, I, I would I would assure the committee that um, you know if it is something that the committee approves, I, I would not um, you know I'd look at it very much as I do school choice and make sure that there is room um, and that we're not actually uh, putting ourselves in a situation where we in K to four breach the recommended class size and end up having to hire a paraprofessional mm -hmm. or, or a teacher. If there isn't room, there isn't room. But if there is room. Um, then I would like to afford them the possibility until we get um, potentially something in the contract or not. Brad, this is Susan. Yes, Hi, Susan. Um, who picks um, which school the child goes to? Let's say the child's an elementary school student. Um, there's you know, obviously three different schools the child could attend. Same with a middle school student, they have two different schools. Yeah, so uh, the, the teacher would generally um, make a request, and I can either honor that request at that particular school or not, and potentially offer up another school, but ultimately it would be my decision in right. collaboration with the building principal. Right, because I, I got, I, you know, that's kind of what I was getting at, like if, if the, we said only if there's space, if there's no space at Varnum Brook, but there happens to be space at Spalding, we could say, well, you can bring your child here, but you have a choice between Spalding and Ashby. Because there's yes. no more room at Varnum Brook type of thing. Right. Okay. I don't know what kind of motion to make. So if you propose one, I'll move the move it. Maybe it's in the agenda. I'm not looking at that right now. No, no it wasn't. I kind of had the same question. I wasn't sure exactly how it had to be worded. I think it would just be worded as... Um, having to do with essentially making sure that we're within the operating within school committee policy and that there's actually space in order to provide um, a district employee with the ability to send a child to an NM school if they're an outside resident. So something like I move um, that we allow students of in-state teachers to have um, to um, accept their children to attend uh, NM schools under school choice, uh, pending available space. So it wouldn't be under school choice. Okay. 
So it would just be scratch um, that part. Basically, the, the 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 motion would be something along the lines of um, moving to allow staff members' children that live outside the district but in state the opportunity to attend North Middlesex schools, provided there is space within the given school, something along those lines. So moved. Oops. I'll second. Thank you. Sooner. If Brad, you need something more specific, just bring it back to the next meeting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Any other uh, questions or comments on that from the committee? All right. Just that um, I think it creates community and I think it's a great and goes along with uh, we are NM. Uh, so. Yep, I agree. All right, uh, David. Yes. June. Yeah. Lisa B. Yes. Lisa M. Yes. Randy. Yes. Susan. Yes. Tom. Yes. And I will vote yes, so that is unanimous. Um, if anybody has anything for the agenda they'd like to uh, to speak about the next meeting, please let me know. Um, otherwise, I will uh, take a motion to adjourn. Oh, June, do you have a question? I do just have a quick question. I know it's about that time of year for superintendent evaluation. Will you be sending an email out soon with forms so we can start doing our homework? Yes, that is a uh, that is a good reminder, June. Thank you. Um, yes, I will uh, endeavor to get that stuff out within the next week or so. And Randy, who participates in that? Given our new policy, Mike, if he wants to, and what am I forgetting? Uh, yeah, I guess that's it. All of us. I'm sorry. I. I... I'm not sure what you're asking. Can you ask that again? Um, we had a policy about who participates. And I think outgoing committee members, current committee members type things like that. Oh, yes. Uh, for um, evaluations. Yes. So we yes. Could, um, anybody who uh, we'd have to vote on any outgoing. Um, okay. To, to be able to submit an evaluation if they wanted to. Otherwise, it's current uh, members that have been um in in the position for i think it was six months we had said i'd have to double check that okay lisa, lisa I, yes um i think we should maybe all talk about um the meetings again from changing it to the monthly instead of bi-weekly um, my concern is just, I mean, I'm new, so, but my concern is what, like Dave had said at the last meeting, that there'll just be so much information to go through in that three hour block where I'm thinking it might be a little bit like come even the fall or winter it might be even overwhelming for a lot of people to make it or parents to make it onto the six o'clock meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, we can add that to our next uh, agenda. Absolutely. And revisit okay. that. I Thank know there you. were some concerns raised. So. Okay. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Lisa. All right. Anything else from anybody? All right. Um, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All right. Dave and June. Uh, Dave? Yes. Oh. Um, June? Lisa B? Yes. Lisa M? Yes. Randy? Yes. Susan? Yes. Tom? Yes. And I will vote yes, we're adjourned. I appreciate the time, everybody. Have a good evening, and we'll, uh, we'll talk soon. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye.